Our dear Lord, we want to thank you for another opportunity to see today. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the breath of our nostrils. We thank you for the strength and the energy you've given to us. We thank you for the beautiful weather. We thank you for the cold. We thank you for the snow. There are so many people all over the world that haven't set their eyes on snow. They don't even know how it looks. They don't know how it feels like. But Lord, we thank you for it. And as we hear your word this morning, we ask, Lord, that you will give us all a heart of understanding. Speak to us by your spirit. Give us revelation concerning your word. Thank you, Father. We bind the great spirit of distraction. We rebuke the devil and his agents. And we ask that you rule and reign supreme in our hearts and in this arena. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone says amen. amen. Once again, I want to congratulate Pastor Justina. It is not easy. The Lord has seen her thoughts far. And we really celebrate with her. I'm so glad to have such a wonderful lady as a family pastor in this church. She's a very beautiful soul, and I thank God for her life. Amen. Today we're going to be looking at a subject and a topic that I love so very much. And it is titled... Vessels of honor. Vessels of honor. There are two scriptural verses I want to read to us. And I want to appreciate actually for the reading that she has done so far. Thank God for the music. Thank God for the instrument. Thank God for everyone that is here this morning. And so we're going to look at two scriptures from the Bible. Nevertheless, the firm foundation of God, which he has laid, stands sure and unshaken, despite attacks. Bearing this, this seal, the Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of the Lord stand apart from wickedness and withdraw from wrongdoing. Now, in the large house, there are not only vessels and objects of gold and silver, but also vessels and objects of wood and of earth wood, and some are for honorable noble good use and some are for dishonorable ignorable common use therefore if anyone cleanses himself from these things which are dishonorable and disobedient or sinful he will be a vessel for honor sanctified or set apart for a special purpose and useful to the master prepared for every good work. Amen. Vessel. Simply put, a container or anything that receives and stores Content. It could be liquid content. It could be any other thing. It could even be flowers. Anything that receives and stores. That is a vessel. And also vessel could be seen as a person regarded as a holder or receiver of something. This time around something that is not material. It could be the Holy Spirit, it could be grace, it could be power, it could be authority, 
He could be anointing. And especially, like I said, something that is non-material. And I went further to look at the word vessel. There are vessels of grace. And there are vessels of honor. And also there are vessels of wrath. There are vessels of wrath. And when we say vessels of grace... It is something elegant, beautiful, something of a beautiful manner, beautiful action, beautiful characteristics. Or biblically, when we say grace, it simply means biblically unmerited favor, something you don't earn but was given to you freely, unmerited. You don't deserve it. You don't earn it. But it was presented or given to you on a platter of gold. And like I said, we also have virtue of wrath. Strong stain or fierce anger. Deeply resentful. Deeply resentful. It's on the inside. Somebody carries it. Somebody receives it and it stores it inside. So we are going to try to identify which vexer we are in Christ. And let me quickly say this as we continue. Its message is really about reconciliation and what we have to do to be part of this work or ministry of reconciliation. And don't you forget this. The coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is about reconciling the world back to himself. And so we're going to be looking at that as we move along. Okay, let's move ahead. Let's move ahead. Now, I was talking about a non-material vessel. And I want to throw more light on that. It relates to the spirit or the soul. Something spiritual. And someone that can minister. We're still looking at the vessel. And God worked through us by grace. Don't forget we said grace is something elegant, something beautiful. Something that is unmerited, unearned, but given to us freely. So God walks through us by his grace to bring all the people into relationship with his son Jesus Christ. That is what the church of Jesus Christ is all about. Don't forget this. The church is God's agent of change here, here on earth. Don't ever forget that. And so, God, through his people, reconciling people who are not in fellowship with him, people who are far away from him, people who have not accepted him, People who have not acknowledged the work that he did on the cross of Calvary. Through the work of reconciliation. Bringing them back to himself. To Jesus Christ. So we need to embrace this wonderful opportunity. It's an opportunity that God has given to us. To be part of his work here on earth. To continue the work that Christ came to do. Because we are the body of Christ. We are saved to save. And the word that saved to help others come to Christ. So we are not only saved, we are saved to save others and to serve them. Because we are the mouth. I remember saying this some time ago. We are the mouth, we are the hands. We are the legs of God. He uses us. And as a vessel. All right, let's move ahead. Now, the word reconciliation. From the word reconcile. 
It simply means to win over to friendly names, to cause to become amicable or peaceable and friendly, to bring into agreement or harmony. Reconciliation is an act of reconciling as when former enemies agree to an amicable settlement. Let's put our differences aside. Let's come back as friends again. Let's embrace each other. Let's make eye contact and put a sweet smile on our faces. Let's see ourselves as friends again and not as foes, not as enemies, not as adversaries, but as friends. That is the word reconciliation. And hear this, we have been given the ministry of reconciliation. And that word, the ministry, simply means the service, function, or perfection of a minister of religion. Now, take note, we're not talking about religion here. Because Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a way of life and a relationship. Religion keeps you far away from God by the do's and don'ts. But Christianity, as a way of life, makes you to embrace more and more the love of God and be very close to Him. Just like a father to his son or daughter, having a personal relationship, a join, a fellowship of a father or of a mother. That's what Christianity is all about. It's not a religion. Let's get this very clearly. Hallelujah. Now, let's think about a few things here as we continue. Because this is very important. I'm actually trying to build the message towards, you know, a goal. Where we are going. Think about this. You are not too young or too old. To be involved in the ministry of reconciliation. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 and verse number 18. It says. And had given to us. The ministry of reconciliation. Every child of God who has had a personal encounter with Christ. Is a minister. A minister of the good news. A minister of the gospel. A minister of glad tidings to the world. You are a minister. You've been called into this ministry. And you are called and given a a responsibility or an assignment. To reconcile the world back to him. That is why you are saved. That is why you are a believer in Christ Jesus. That is why you are a vessel. Because you are carrying something that somebody else needs. I've always told people, you are a solution to somebody else's problem. And until we realize this as believers, that we are a solution to some people's problem, we would not be active. We wouldn't Get ourselves involved in what God has called us to do. There is something God has put inside of you. Not to be wasted. Not to be useless. But to be useful. And anything you don't use, you lose it. We must be very careful about this. He has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. The number two thought. Focus on the church goals this season. And what are the goals? We have said, let's go and embrace. Let's equip and let's engage. Let's focus on it. Because as a family of Christ at Ealing Chapel, we are one. We have a goal. And when the church authority says, this is the way we're going to go this quarter, what do we do? We all are supposed to be focused on it and follow suit. Let's focus on it. Number three thought, 
Obey the great commission. And what is the great commission? Go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Every creature. We don't have to be selective. This is very important. If you've never been to Asia before, be ready to go. If you've never been to the Caribbeans before, be ready to go. Because you are a vessel that is carrying something that the people over there need. Or need, rather. The people over there need you. There is a man there that needs you. There is a woman there that needs you. And so you have to be ready for that. And in Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16, he says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believes not shall be damned. It is not the will or wish of God that any man should perish. But that all should come unto repentance. That should be our wish. That should be our will as well. Let's have people who have not known Christ come to him and be saved. That is why the church is existing. We have a responsibility. And the earlier we realize this and get to work, the better it will be. And heaven will always rejoice. Then follow him fully. Hebrews 12 to says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. No one asks but him. And Luke 9 62 says, And Jesus said unto, and Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. You have said yes to Christ. It is forward ever, backward never. Make that resolution. Make that decision. Be firm with it. Not a Christian today and unbeliever tomorrow. Set your gaze. Set your focus on him. Look up to him. He's got everything you need to succeed in this Christian race. He's got your back. You don't need to be afraid or scared. He knows your end from your beginning. He knows your strength and your weakness. He knows what you need to excel in this race. So don't be scared. Don't be afraid. Don't be. Don't be. Don't be. Now let's move ahead. A quick reminder, a quick reminder. Do not be ashamed to engage someone out there with a piece of the good news. People are tired of hearing horrible news every now and then. People are sick and tired of hearing terrorist attack. People are tired of hearing how the economy is failing. Somebody out there want to hear some piece of good news that will give them a relief. Comfort. Peace of mind. The world is surrounded by bad news every now and then. Turn to your television. You're going to hear something that will will affect you emotionally. Go to the social media. You see so many posts that will put you off. But not the Bible. Not the word of God. Because that is the good news that the word needs. Unfortunately, nobody wants to hear it. But we need to do something about that. By speaking forth to them. Do not feel inadequate. Don't say, I don't have it. I don't know what to say. I'm not a pastor. Let's leave that for Pastor Justina. Let's leave that for Bobby or leave that for John. No. The moment you make up your mind and open your mouth, 
the Holy Spirit is going to take over whatever you're going to say. And that is why you mustn't forget that you are but a vessel in the hands of the Lord that he wants to use. He's just looking for someone who we I say and who we go for us. That is what God is asking for. Who will stand at the gap between me and the people? That is what God is asking for. Who will do that? And now why reconciliation? Christ came to save the lost soul. The primary reason that Christ Jesus came to this sinful world, died a shameful death on the cross of Calvary, is because he has identified that mankind is lost. He knew before he came that we are all screwed up. We've screwed up and we have been screwed. And he needed to fix it. He needed to fix us. He knows that the devil once asked many people to go with him to hell and suffer in hell. He knew about that. He needed to cause and bring about a change. And so when he came, the primary purpose, according to the book of Matthew chapter 18 and verse number 11, for the Son of Man is come. To say that which was lost. That is why he came. He came for the lost souls. That is why reconciliation. To reconcile them back to himself. To reconcile them back to himself. And this is very, very important. It is something I want us to take note of because it's going to help us as we go and get along, you know, uh, in this message that we are, we are looking at very carefully this, this morning. Sinners, Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned. No single one person is exempted. All of us. David said, in sin did my mother conceive me. We are all sinners by nature. But the moment we accepted Christ as our Lord and person and Savior, that makes the difference. That's why you are no longer a sinner. You could fall into sin every now and then, but you are no longer a sinner because you have accepted him as your Lord and person and Savior. And God expects you to grow to maturity every day. Make a difference every day. Take a step. Move ahead. Get perfect. For the Bible says we should be perfect even as our heavenly father is perfect. But don't forget it is not by your power nor by your mind. It is by the grace of God. Hallelujah. He came to save mankind. Human race. You and me. Who do we minister to? Now we are aware that we have been given the ministry of reconciliation. We are aware that we are ministers of God. Who do we minister to? As I said before now, Matthew 18, 11, the lost souls, those who are lost, the backslider in heart. Who are the backsliders in heart? People who were once good believers, dedicated, committed. They love the Lord with all their hearts. They make the Bible a priority. Surrender their life and their totality to God. But because of the situation, because of the economy, because of whatever the age that is, Fighting and warring against them on the outside and even spiritually, they decided to derail. They left the faith. These are the backsliders. And hear what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs 14 14. It said, The backslider in heart shall be filled with all 
will, shall be filled with his own ways. And the Bible equally declares that the way that seemed right unto a man, the end thereof is the way of death or destruction. The way that seemed right to a man. They are full of their own ways. No longer the ways of God. They have left the faith. People like that, some of them could still be coming to church, but the interest is no more there. The zeal is no more there. They are just coming to fulfill all righteous things. I don't want that guy to say, ah, bro, you've not been coming to church. So let me just go and show up so they will know that I'm still here. But they know that your heart has departed from the Lord. These people too, they need the word. We need to speak to them. We need to encourage them. Like the prodigal son. He left. And when he came back, the father heartily embraced him and welcomed him back home. All the one sheep out of the hundred, ninety-nine were left. And the shepherd went after just one. What makes that one so important and special? Simply because he's not worried about those that are with him. Just like you will not be worried about your child or your daughter that is not giving you problem. But the one that gives you heartache is the black sheep in the family. They need our attention. They need our love. And they went after that one and got him back. And the Bible says in Christ's parable that getting that one back triggered great joy in heaven. To get a joy in heaven over one that repents. Much more than 99 that do not need repentance. This is important. The law and the mighty. Luke one fifty two. He had pulled down the mighty from their seats and exhorted them of low degree. If you have the opportunity to speak to those in the parliament, go ahead, speak the word. You are a vessel. God is looking for a way to reach as many people who may be unreachable. You may just have that opportunity to speak to them. Don't blow it. Take advantage of it. Because you are a vessel and a vessel of honor at that. The bond and free. Colossians 3 verse 11. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, uh, Scythian, born, non free, but Christ is all in all. The free and the bond, they need to be reconciled back to Christ Jesus. That is why he came. And that is why he has given us this ministry of reconciliation. Hallelujah. Let's move ahead. Privileged and the unprivileged. James chapter number 1 verse number 27 says, Pure religion and not defied before God. And the father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. That is pure religion. Pure religion. We need to touch somebody's heart. We need to touch somebody's life. No matter who they are, no matter at what stage or category or whatever you can think of, we need to touch them. We need to touch them with the love of Christ, with the love of God. We need to touch their lives. We need to impart them positively. We need to impart them positively. The rich or the poor. The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. Who made the rich? God. The poor, God. That doesn't make them inferior. We are all equal in the sight of God. Hallelujah. Ways to reach out. We're getting close. Through the word. And I like this portion from the scriptures. 
Proverbs chapter number 16 and verse number 24. It says, Pleasant words are acts and honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Sweet words. It ministers grace to the hearer. It lifts up a soul. Do you know that somebody who is contemplating suicide can be rescued and redeemed by the words that you speak to him or her? A sick person who has been down and is just thinking, am I going to live like this all my life? And he just stopped by and ministered some words of grace to that soul. That would serve as a medicine, as a medication, if you like, to that person. You see what the Bible says? It said, it, said, it is health, health to the bones. He brings strength to the bones. He brings healing to the bones. Hallelujah. Through your character. Matthew 7.20 says, Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. What fruits? Galatians chapter number 5 and verse number 22. He said the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, temperance, faith. That is it. The fruits of the Spirit. Your character is the fruit that you bear and people want to taste of it. Is this sweet or bitter? Let's think about that. Charitable deeds. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse number 1. If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sound brass or a tinkly cymbal. Empty, empty vessel makes the loudest noise. We are not empty. We are but filled with the Holy Spirit. You are not empty. There is something in you that is so special. And somebody else there, somebody, somebody somewhere is in need of it. Don't keep it to yourself. Don't keep it. Release it. Charitable deeds. There's something you can do that will put a sweet smile on somebody's face. Yes, there is. There is. Imagine seeing a man without a good jacket, winter jacket. At this time of the year, walking on the streets, and you are driving a cruiser around with, you know, your heater in your car with another very beautiful jacket, and you see that soul passing. Just imagine how the person will be feeling inside that cold. If there is a spare that you can give out, why not? Charitable deed. You have made that person's life easier. And even comfortable. Acts of kindness, Second Peter one seven, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity, like we have mentioned before. Little act of kindness matters a lot. When you do this, you're going to be remembered for all time. And there is a reward that goes with it. Show and display of love that you really care. Luke 6, 27. But I say unto you, which hear me now, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. Love everybody. Even those who made themselves your enemies. You are not their enemies. They made you their enemies. And so why not? Be kind to them. Be nice to them. Do whatever you can. All for the sake of of Jesus Christ. Now the message. John 3 16. What is the message of reconciliation? Don't forget we are talking about being a vessel to be used of God to reconcile the world back to himself. Now what is the message we are to pass across? Number one. John 3 16. For God so loved the world that he gave it's only by God's Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Let them know that there is hope for them. Let them know that there is still someone that loves them. 
No matter who they are, no matter how they have goofed or mixed up, let them know that you see someone that cares about them, that loves them so dearly, genuinely. We all have got our past. We all have mixed up at one time or the other. The only difference is because we have found the way. We have found the truth. And we have found life. And that is in the book of John 14, 16. Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man. Listen carefully, people of God. Jesus Christ is not a way. He is the way. There was a time I listened to a preacher being interviewed by Oprah. And they asked him, is Jesus Christ really the only way? And he couldn't answer that simple question. I was disappointed. If he is the only way, there is no other way you can go through to God. Every other way will end or lead to destruction. I can assure you that. Because I know what I'm talking about from the scriptures. It is the only way. It is the only truth. And it is life. And it can give you life. It can change your life. It can turn your life around. It can turn your situation around for good. He's the only one who has the ability and the power to turn your life around for good. The life that you desire. The life that is meaningful. He can give your life a meaning. He is the life. And Matthew eleven twenty eight says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. People are depressed. People are stressed. There are tons and tons of problems and do numerous to mention that people are going through right now. They are carrying a yoke and a burden. And Christ is saying, bring it to me. I'll take it over from you. I'll give you my yoke for it is light and easy. Cast your curse upon me for I care for you. He cares. He truly cares. He says what he means and he means what he says. And also let them know that Christ is coming soon. He said it. I will come back again. Let's not forget that. As a reminder of sense that he is coming back soon. Let others know as well that he is going to come back someday soon. They shouldn't forget that. All right. In the book of Luke chapter 10. And verse number 2. He says. Therefore said he unto them. The harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Just look around you. How many people haven't heard the gospel? Look around your neighborhood. How many people are heading to hell? Let's look closer, even in our families, among our friends. How many of them believe what we believe? How many of them have accepted this truth? How many of them have accepted Christ in their lives? How many of them can say, if I die now, I am guaranteed the kingdom of heaven? How many can say that? You can say that because you know. Remember what we read from the beginning? The foundation is sure. God knows those who are his. He knows you are his. The foundation has been laid. Christ knows you. Let's get some other people to join us. So their place in the kingdom of God could be guaranteed. 
Can the Lord come to me this year, 2019, and going forward? To be a vessel of honor? To carry the message to the people out there? Would I be ashamed? Would I be shy? Would I feel inadequate? Yes, that is possible. If you can say that boldly right now, the Lord, I am ready, send me. That is what he's been waiting for. He's been waiting on you. He's been waiting on me. Let's play our part. Let's be up and doing. Let us not make God feel so sorry for saving us. Let's not make God feel so sorry for saving us. What uses a manager in the office when he cannot live up to his bidding or his responsibility at work? What use it is, is it? You pay so much for the operations manager and he can't even run your factory. What use is that manager? But thank God we have the opportunity today to say, Lord, we are useful. I will want you to empower us, to engage us. You know, we want you to equip us. We want to go out there and engage people. We want to go out there and speak forth the word of, of love, of joy, of peace in your heart. And bring them unto him. And I would, we would like to invite you for all time because this is very important. If you have not made the Lord Jesus Christ your Lord and personal Savior, this is an opportunity for you to do so. All that I've been saying may sound so strange to you, probably because you've not really had a personal encounter. But I don't want you to live here this morning, the same way you came. There is always an opportunity for you to invite him into your heart as your Lord and personal Savior. Just make sure you open your heart. Let him come in. It says in the book of Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that he died for you, and he came back alive after three days, and believe in your heart, then you will be translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And so if you are here today, before you live here, talk to somebody, and the Lord will bless you. Let us pray. I do not want to thank you for your word this morning. You are our God. Use us as vessels of honor to reach out to us many people who are there, who are lost on their way to destruction. Help us to be able to reconcile them back to you by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Amen.